Well, somebody that believes the spirit of the Lord God is upon you and he has anointed you. He has anointed your life. He has anointed your tongue. Somebody say the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I want you to know something today. Jerry Morrow is in the house. Mark Masson, day six, how to win the battle for your tongue. Today, we're gonna find out, Brother Strillo is going to remind us that we have an incredible ally in this battle, and that ally is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I just believe, I feel it in my mouth today, I believe that God is going to anoint your mouth with a fresh anointing, and I'm excited today. This is a powerful, powerful session. I encourage you, just move everything else aside, and you wanna be fully, fully tuned in to this message. Sometimes we struggle with things, and we may have even struggled with them for years, but with just one touch of the Holy Spirit, uh, our life is changed and transformed, and Dr. Cirillo really brings great revelation today. It's like a bomb exploding in your lap. It is a powerful session today. Amen. And what a joy that God has taken us to this position where we surrender our life 100% to, to God. And because when we surrender fully to God, then we are candidate for the anointing of God to come upon our life and that God is going to use our tongue to declare life and to declare death. Oh, death and life are in the power of my tongue. And I'm so happy today. <laughs> You know what, I like that the life of God is in our tongue. You see, the tongue, the Bible says, can set hell on fire, but I want you to know something. God is raising up men and women in this school of ministry that are going to set heaven on fire. You're gonna set your nation on fire, your life, your family, your ministry. Listen, if you are ready, I'm excited today. I feel the power, the presence of God. God is gonna to touch your life today in a very special way. Would you join me in welcoming once again, God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. Remember that God has shown us that one of the major factors within the body of Christ that's been hindering the flow and the power and the complete anointing of God from flowing through us is this battle that we have with this little member called the tongue. As Jesus was the express image of the Father, so you and I, beloved, are supposed to be. You can say, ouch, it's all right. You and I are supposed to be the express image of Jesus Christ. I hope that you can receive this tonight. The very same anointing that anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth 2,000 years ago with the Holy Ghost is the same Holy Spirit and the same anointing that anoints you and I today, the same absolutely no different. Now, in, and specifically, as you and I are talking and God is bringing us and raising us up to a new position of accountability, God's end time people, he's raising them up to a new position of responsibility. He's raising them up to a new position of discipline. Remember what we said? He's shown us one of the major factors within the church that's been hindering 
the completeness of the manifestation of the flow of the power of the Spirit of God through our lives. And the prophecy is this. God is going to pour out a special anointing upon our mouths. Like Isaiah, who received the coal from off of the altar, who saw a picture of himself when he saw the revelation of Almighty God and how God cleansed him from sin. And the confirmation was when that seraphim took that coal from off the altar and put it on his lips. I prophesy to you tonight, beloved, that God's end time people are going to speak forth words. And here's going to be the key, and here's going to be the victory that God places in their mouths. Those words will come forth with power and anointing until their very enemies will be dumbfounded and unable to stand up against the end time body of Christ. We'll break down strongholds of the enemy. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're mighty, they're strong. God has given us the power. He's given us the ability to do what? To play patty cake with the devil? No, to demolish the power of the enemy. And do what? And bring every thought into captivity. God spoke to Jeremiah, 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, the 29th verse. And this is what he said. He said, is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. The word of God is going to come forth with such power that it will literally destroy the work of the enemy and free captives that are being held in the clutches of satanic oppression. We're going to see unique manifestations of the Word of God that's going to come forth from the mouths of people who rise up to a new position of accountability, responsibility, and discipline. They'll speak the word with boldness. The word will bring forth judgment. God told Jeremiah, the fifth chapter and the 14th verse, because you speak this word, Jeremiah, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people would. Look out. When men and women of God break through and tap the resources of an unknown power up until this time in the church. When the barriers are removed and when the pure stream of the Holy Spirit flows through God's end time people, the enemies of the Lord will become like wood and the word out of our mouth will be like fire. Somebody say, I'd like God to anoint my mouth. Luke 
21:15 Jesus is speaking He said for I myself will give you a mouth How many of you know he gives us a new heart Come on don't look at me with that school of ministry look How many of you know he gives us a new heart he takes away the stony heart of flesh. You can't attain what Brother Shula was talking about unless you get a new heart because it's out of the heart that flows the issues of life. How many of you believe he gives us a new mind? How many of you know, Brother it's not God taking this old sinful mind of ours, but it's a transformation of the mind of Christ. That we have the ability to be able to have a 100% pure, a 100% clean, a 100% victorious mind. Because it's not ours, it's the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. You think God could give us a new mouth too? Oh, come on, come on. Do you think if we surrender every part of our being up to him, do you think he could give us a new mouth? He said, I myself will give you a mouth. And such utterance and wisdom as all of your foes combined will be unable to stand against or to refute. Somebody. Luke 12, 12, listen to it again. For the Holy Ghost, remember the prophecy. God's going to anoint his people to speak. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. But I want to tell you tonight, beloved, before we can rise up, before we can speak the word in power, and remember, God is bringing us into a new dimension of power and victory where we will experience the power, the authority that God has ordained for us. Before we can speak the word in power and the authority as God has planned, God is calling us to a new position, a position of accountability. Are you willing to walk out of this school of ministry with a new spirit of accountability. Amen. Are you willing to walk out of this school of ministry with a new position of responsibility? Amen. Are you willing to walk out of this building as disciplined soldiers? Amen. Jesus said, Matthew 10, 19 and 20, when they deliver you up, take no thought Now, I don't know whether you understand what God is trying to teach us. How many of you know it's so easy to become involved with the flesh? How many of you know it's so easy to think that we are weak and the world is strong? How many of you know it's so easy to think that they're the intelligent people and we're the dumbbells? I've got news for you, brother. This little preacher is just an orphan boy, but I don't mind talking to all the big Einsteins in all the world. I remember when I was arrested 
in Argentina. Three times. I never forget the first time. Put me in the paddy wagon. You say, what did they arrest you for, Brother Shrillo? Practicing medicine without a license. <laughs> Just like these newspapers. Faith healer! I wish they wouldn't talk about something they don't know anything about. How many of you know that no man heals the sick? I'll never forget the preachers got so excited. And they said, oh, Brother Shula, we got to get you an attorney. <laughs> oh, yes. I said to him, I got one. I walked into the court, stood before the judge, and here were all my accusers, the president of the College of Medical Doctors. They wanted to stop the crusade. Didn't want me to stand on the platform and preach and pray for the sick. They want to stop us on television from praying for the sick. They say we're getting involved in medicine. <laughs> the problem with too many preachers in today's world is they're so willing to compromise. Judge looked down at me. He said to me, who's going to represent you? Because they had their lawyers standing alongside them. And I said, I have my representation here. You know, I tell you, they thought, man, this guy, he's really screwed. Judge stood up, looked over the bench. He thought he, somebody may have been standing behind me. <laughs> and then I believe he really thought he was going to appease me. So he let me talk. And I told him how God created the world and how he made man in his own image and what happened in the conflict between Adam and Eve and how sin and sickness and death came into this world through man's disobedience. And then I told him about the curse and how sickness and sin and death came. And then I told him how that God so loved the world that he didn't leave man in his sin. He didn't leave man in his sickness. He didn't leave man in his death. But he sent his son Jesus. And for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the work of the devil. The judge stood up and he looked at these people. He said, what in the world have you done? <laughs> he says, what did you bring this man in here for? Well, judge, he's out there praying for the sick. The judge looked at me and slapped the gavel down and said, go on back and keep doing what you're doing. I 
went back to Argentina the second time. They arrested me again. I went through the whole thing again. Well, you know, it's good to be a dumb preacher. We were in Rosario, Argentina together. Knock came on my door, six o'clock at night. One of my associate ministers came to me and said, you better come quickly. Dr. Ness is being arrested at the front gates of the stadium. I said, what's going on? They said they got thousands of troops out there. I said, what have they got the troops out for? Because they vowed they're gonna stop you from going into the stadium. I said, thousands for me? <laughs> I mean, they were sure, I don't know how many there were, there's a great number. They was all around for blocks. They had barricades up. They were holding the people back by the thousands. I said to my associate minister, and Dr. Ness was up against the, the entrance into the uh, stadium. It was a gate and they stuck a padlock on it. And he was, I can still see him to this day. I mean, that's a warrior brother, I mean. If I ever go to battle, I want him. <laughs> yes, sir. There he was standing there talking to them left and right. He knows a little bit of Spanish, only enough to be dangerous. <laughs> oh, and I, I got my clothes on. Went out the hotel door. Walked down the street to the stadium. There I saw all these thousands of people. And I just pushed my way through the stadium, you know, through the crowd. And I don't know whether people recognized me or not from the posters. This was the first night. And I pushed my way through the crowd and I got to the barricade and I saluted the soldiers, walked over the barricade They think it's funny. They ought to go through it. <laughs> I walked up towards that stadium, which was about two blocks away from the barricade. And I mean, you should have seen it. It was just like the Pied Piper. As soon as I walked over that barricade, the people must have recognized me and everybody come over the barricade and followed me up to the gate of the stadium. Revival broke out in that place in Argentina. They went for 365 days, morning, afternoon, and night in services. They couldn't stop the people from getting saved and healed and filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> when they shall deliver you up, Matthew 10, 19 and 20, Take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour. Fanaticism, call it what you want. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Beloved, how many of you believe it's time we come to the place where we can completely trust God? Yeah. That's right, people. God's raising up a people that are going to be so saturated, so controlled by the Holy Spirit, 
they're going to walk in the same power, the same authority as Jesus did. Kapuriaka. God's going to pour out a special anointing upon their mouths. They're going to speak forth the words he places in their mouth with such power, with such anointing. Their enemies are going to be dumbfounded. Your enemies are not going to be able to stand against you. As God's word will come forth out of your mouth, it'll break strongholds. It'll break the enemy's power. God's word will come forth with new power, new authority out of your mouth. Sakapuriaka, kapa, hika. You'll speak life. You'll speak life into your circumstance. You'll speak life into your circumstance. And I agree with the prophet of God. I am speaking life over your circumstances. I am speaking life over every dead thing that the enemy has tried to convince you cannot be resurrected. And I declare that dreams are being resurrected, dead things in your life, your ministry, relationships, because, honey, the power of life. I know the power of death is also in our mouth, but we are in a school of ministry because we are learning to release the power of life through this member called the tongue. Amen. Amen. We can talk ourselves out of our dreams or we can talk ourselves into our dreams. There's power in what we say and we can use that power for life and for good things to change our circumstances. And I, I loved this message today. I loved what Dr. Cirillo shared and I had to look up Luke 21 15 for myself. It says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom and I love how Dr. Cirillo talked about how God gives us a new heart. He, we have the mind of Christ. He gives us a mouth. And, uh, and then he goes on to say about how when we are in Christ, we are a new creation. Our job is, Mark, as you were saying, is to yield, yield to the Holy Spirit. And, that, and God gives us a new mouth. Even in Jeremiah, it talks about the Lord touching our mouth and putting the word of God in our mouth. Amen. It's a powerful message today. Dr. Cirillo's story from Argentina. Oh my goodness, was that ever tr uh, transforming? Like that was a powerful message. Honey, Mark, listen, the prophet of God spoke a word today. I tell you what, that word is for somebody. I love it. He said to tell the people of God, God is going to pour out a special anointing upon your mouth. I want you to know something. This wasn't just for the people that were in Atlanta. It's not just for the other people who are on Facebook or YouTube or us here. But somebody say God is pouring out a special anointing upon my mouth. Brother Cirillo prophesied. Listen, I want you to know something. There are true prophets. Morris Cirillo is a prophet of God. What he speaks has the power to come to pass. And Mark Masson, he said, they're gonna speak forth the words that God places in their mouth with such power, such anointing, that their enemies are going to be dumbfounded. Amen, amen, amen. And what a joy. We just have to provide the vessel. Amen. We just need to provide a vessel and God promised us what a responsibility and what a trust from God that He will anoint us. I have decided in my heart, Greg, for many years that I will not misuse this tongue. And it is better for us sometimes not to say one word because if we don't speak, then the words we're going to speak, they're going to be charged with life. They're going to be charged with power. You see, the Bible says in John 3, 34, I've loved that passage and it helps me to understand so many things. It says that Jesus, the Son of God, always, always, always spoke the word of God. 
And then he says, why? Because God gave him the spirit without measure. Ah. So if we are filled with the spirit of God, then the words that will come out of this mouth will always be the word of God the Father. And we know that the words of God are words of love. They are words of forgiveness. They are words of healing. They are words of provision. Father, I give you praise and yes. I thank you that you have chosen us to be divine yes. vessel in our generation. Yes, Father, we will not misuse our tongue because what a joy, what a pleasure to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord and to release in our generation the resurrected power of the life of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Thank we give you, you praise. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, I am speaking life into my circumstances. I cannot wait tomorrow. I cannot believe it's already the closing anointing impartation service. Brother Srillo is bringing an incredible closing message tomorrow. I want you to know something. I believe that the Lord is going to touch your tongue touch your heart, touch your mind, touch your ministry, your life, your finances tomorrow in this closing anointing service. I know that there are many Isaiahs who are watching, who are listening, that are participating, saying, Lord, here am I. And I want you to know God has heard your cry. There is an angel that I believe God will send to literally touch your lips, touch your tongue, just like the prophet Isaiah received an anointing from the presence of God. You do not want to miss this impartation, this anointing service tomorrow. I tell you what, I'm excited. Bring somebody along with you that needs God to do something for them that maybe he has never done before. And as we go off today, people have been asking, are there any more sets of the Winning the Battle of the Tongue DVDs? There are just a few sets that are left. This is an amazing gift. Six full sessions from this School of Ministry. We're just touching the tip of it in these seven days together. Normally over a hundred dollar value and it is a gift for your gift to help take this school of ministry to the nations of the world of just $25. So listen, the greatest investment that you and I can make in our life is spending a little more time in contact with the Word of God. So take advantage of it. Mark, thank you, what a powerful prayer. Honey, what an incredible word today. And thank you for your encouragement. And I love when you say that we can talk ourselves out of our dreams, but why not just talk ourselves into our dreams? And so you stay connected. On behalf of Teresa Cirillo, David, Mark, Jerry, our TV department, all of the team here at Legacy. This is Greg Morrow reminding you that you are a part of God's end time plan and God has not planned any defeats for you. We'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name.